Hello my friends, welcome to another video from Dr. James in the Hutchin School Chemistry Lab. Today we are going to be looking at some useful skills for answering questions in electrochemistry. The first thing we're going to look at is how to draw a cell diagram. So what we need first are two containers. One, two. Next step, we're going to need to put some solution in each of them and an electrode, which looks like this in both. Okay, now every cell is going to look the same so far. We've got an external wire going through a voltmeter connecting to our other electrode. Now, we also need a salt bridge. So this is our salt bridge and we might write salt bridge. Very good. Okay, now we need to know something about the conditions for our cell. Now let's imagine that we have ourselves a Danielle cell. So we're going to consider a Danielle cell. In a Danielle cell we have zinc solid as one species in zinc 2 plus and in the other we have copper solid in copper 2 plus and we're probably going to use potassium nitrate in our salt bridge okay so this is just my working out over here all right back to the good part we have an electrode it's made of zinc and this one is made of copper. I arbitrarily chose which one would be which. Doesn't particularly matter. We know from the electrochemical series that zinc is a reducer. So we have reducer, which will get itself oxidized. So where we have zinc, we have an oxidation reaction because zinc is a reducer, it gets oxidized and produces zinc 2 plus. Oxidation is loss, so electrons are going to be lost here and oxidation occurs at the anode. So we know that this is our anode. Now anodes are negative. We know this because cathodes are positive. This is a negative electrode. Electrons will travel from our negative electrode where we produce electrons and we produce cations. Electrons will then be released by this and travel through this wire in this direction to our cathode. Now our cathode is oppositely charged. Our cathode is positive, just like the red cat said. And so those electrons are also attracted across here. Now, what we have here is a positive cell and we know that the red cat is positive. So this is our cathode. So here we can write cathode. We know at the cathode that we get reduction. We know that reduction is gain. And the thing that is gaining electrons is going to be copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons giving copper solid. So we must have copper 2 plus in here. Now we know that our salt bridge which is potassium nitrate we know that our cations are going to go to our cathode so we draw in our cation and we say that it's going to the cathode and we draw in our anion and we say that it is going to our anode. And that is a fully labelled electrochemical cell representing the Danielle cell. Now what we may also be asked to do is include the equation. So if we were asked to do that we would put copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to copper solid and over here we would do where this space, zinc goes to zinc 
2 plus plus 2 electrons like that and there we have a fully completed cell. Our questions might ask us for marks and usually the distribution is going to look something a little like this. We have half a mark for the flow of electrons from anode to cathode. We have one mark for getting the anode and cathode bit correct. We maybe have either one or half a mark for getting the charges correct. We have to label our materials in each of our anode and cathode. We have to label the solutions in our uh, each cell and we may also be required to identify that oxidation is occurring and reduction is occurring. So there we go. At the cathode we have reduction. I hope that makes sense. The next thing I wanted to talk about was useful skills in relation to the electrochemical series. Here is the electrochemical series and some things that we need to know if we move down the periodic table. This reaction of water here we can essentially ignore. So we can ignore this guy because what this is talking about is using hydrogen peroxide as a strong oxidizer. We will never see this reaction going back in the reverse direction because we're going to favour this one if we're going in the reverse direction. Permanganate. We can use permanganate as an example here. Permanganate MnO4- is a very strong oxidizer but only in the presence of this acid. So 8H plus here is more than if we had HMnO4 there, which we don't. So 8H plus means that we need excess free acid present. We don't have that. Unless you have excess free acid, you can't get permanganate to act as a very strong oxidizer. It just won't happen. So it's important not just to consider the element that you're, or the polyatom that you are looking at, but also the other requirements. Does it require acid? If it requires acid as well, is there acid present? If not, you won't see the reaction described. So we have acid required here and here and here and here. This reaction here, when we look at electrolysis, this one will turn up a lot because we're looking at the oxidation here. So this, if there's water around, we'll discount these things. But we don't need to know about that just yet. So you can ignore what I just said if it doesn't make any sense. This reaction proceeds usually in the reverse direction, just like this one would, but it will occur first. Again, this is electrolysis, so you don't have to recall that bit at the moment. The next thing I wanted to note was nitrate. Now, nitrate here requires acid, just like we talked about up here. But similarly, nitrate here requires acid. Now, which one of these two occurs? Well, this is a bit counterintuitive. You would think that the when we have a concentrated acid and concentrated nitrate, we would have this example, but in fact, we don't. So, the least concentrated version of acidified nitrate produces nitrogen oxide, shown here. The more concentrated acid, which seems weird because we have less free acid, but more concentrated nitrate in the presence of acid will produce the nitrogen dioxide gas. So this is more concentrated and this is less concentrated. And you can perhaps remember this because it's kind of the opposite than what you'd expect. This one has 4 H plus and this only has 2, but this is for the more concentrated version. The next thing to talk about is this reaction here, which is if we have hydrogen peroxide but no acid present, then we get 
this reaction. So hydrogen peroxide by itself is a weak reducer. In the presence of acid, it becomes a very strong oxidizer. So this reaction here tends to occur this way also and doesn't occur with oxygen in the presence of acid. So this is this would be a rare set of circumstances. So this reaction here is for hydrogen peroxide without the presence of acid which changes its reactivity. The next reaction to talk about is this one. Now this one we're going to use a lot. This is our corrosion reaction. We have water and oxygen. Not necessarily in that order. We have oxygen and water forming hydroxide and this is our corrosion product. Moving down even further we have sulfate. Now again sulfate here requires the presence of acid just like up here. If we don't have any acid we're not going to get this reaction to occur. What you probably won't have is the reaction with sulfur dioxide plus water. So if we're considering sulfate ions we need the presence of acid for that to occur. Next thing to mention is that this is our zero point but this is for acid. So if you get any type of acid we're expecting to see this reaction. If you get HNO3 then you will get some of these reactions but most of these reactions. Nitric acid is a little bit tricky. If it's concentrated we'll get this reaction because the excess concentrated nitric acid will give us these. When we run out of our free acid we will get this until it eventually stops. Other acids like hydrochloric acid will simply use this reaction here. That's about it for interesting features of the electrochemical series. Most of these then are quite simple. Notice that we have another water here. This is water acting as a reducer and this is water acting as an oxidizer. Water can do both of these processes. So that's about it and I hope that all makes sense. Let's talk about it in class if it doesn't and otherwise I hope you have a great day.